Yes, guys, you're back again with me, Mark Adiel. And today you're watching the I and O podcast live and direct. I can't even bear out the location. But, you know, like I said to you before, when we get guests, we get the best of the best. And today we have the one and only Carl Rushman. Yes. How are you, Carl? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time. time coming back. So if you don't know, Carl is a professional footballer. He actually plays for Brighton and Hove Albion in the Premier League, but he's on loan at Lincoln City at the moment. He's also an England under-21 goalkeeper. So you know this guy's got skills. But I can't lie, I scored a few goals against you, you know? <laughs> I don't remember that. I do not <laughs> you don't remember that? Oh, no, Carl. Let's, 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 um, how are you feeling? How are you feeling today? How's everything? Yeah, I'm good. Played yesterday um, in Exeter, so it's... Um miles away long journey yeah. back but yeah I'm feeling good now yeah um, talk to me about obviously you know let's just give them a backstory how how we obviously met it was at Halifax Town how how was that how, how was your what were your memories of Halifax it was just so funny all the time <laughs> we had some big characters in that group though yeah, um, yeah I think I remember the first day I don't know whether you was there I think we played our first game it was Bradford and everybody was so nervous. Everybody yeah. was like sitting with their heads down, hands yeah. on knees and everything. But it only took, what, a week or so before we started gelling and then yeah. building relationships, as it were. But yeah, we was close and I just, I did love it, to be fair. Um, obviously, I, I wanted to obviously go higher than that. Um, but I loved spending my time there. And it was just on my doorstep. Unfortunately for you, you had to wake <laughs> up early and travel yeah. in from Sheffield. But yeah, um, it's track. But now for me, it was, you know, 10, 15 minutes yeah. on the bus. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it. Yeah. Carl, so let's let's take it back in time. So obviously you started off at, um, you started off at um, Huddersfield Town. Yeah. So how was that? So what, what age was that from? Yeah, so when I was younger, I was playing Sunday League and, um, and then I got scouted at around seven or eight. I think it was about eight. Um, so I was playing there in the system, pretty much came up through the system from the under eights to the under 16s. And when you was that age, it was kind of like, you almost expected that after the end of the season, you was going to get another contract. Like, yeah. Not trying to be like big headed or anything, but like when it got to the under 16s, I was thinking, oh, I'm just going to get another contract because that's how it was going. Like there was no, it wasn't as serious as it is when it gets to, you know, the scholarship and yeah. the times when we met each other at Halifax. Um, so and then I was I went into the meeting, you know, I was jolly and happy. I was with my mum and dad. And then, yeah. you know, the first thing they said when I got into the meeting was, it's a no. Um, and then obviously, if that didn't happen, then I probably wouldn't be here where I am now. So everything happens for a reason. But honestly, my heart sank. And, you know, when you're young and you just get told no. And, you know, I went after that, I went on trial at um, Bradford, Chesterfield and Rochdale. I oh, uh, wow. spent a few few days, weeks there with each team. And, you know, again, it came down to the decisions and every single one of them said no. Um, wow. all, all had different reasons, but yeah, um, yeah, they said that it wasn't going to be, uh, yeah. like they couldn't see me playing for them. Um, so and then in that time, uh, obviously I went on the exit trials and stuff like that. I don't know if you would have done that. And uh, I don't, yeah, no. But yeah, I went on the exit trials as well. And nothing was happening. I felt as though yeah. I was on like a downhill spiral kind of thing. And yeah. you know, ever since I got turned away from Huddersfield and I was going to other clubs and everybody was saying no, I was like, I felt as though- how, Yeah, how did that make you feel? Like as a as a young as a young child, really? Yeah, obviously like my mum and dad, they, they're not really into football or anything like um So they were just trying to make sure that I was okay. Um, and they couldn't really offer too much advice in terms of football because they didn't have it yeah. at the time. Um, so I felt as well I was kind of like alone in that bit. Um, yeah. wasn't, it was a tough time for me, uh, personally, because obviously I felt as though that I wasn't good enough at all. Yeah. Um, and it always plays on your mind that, you know, if they don't think I'm good enough, then especially at that age, I was like, well, nobody's going to think I'm good enough. But, and then obviously as time goes on, you, t you start to realize that football is about opinions and, you know, you might not be good enough for one person, but you're in a squad at a different, a different team, with yeah. a different manager. But um, but yeah, I, I was on the downhill spiral and then obviously I got the call from Halifax saying that, listen, we know, it was in the time that I was 
going on chart at the other three clubs. Yeah. And they said that we know that you're going at these other clubs, see how it goes. Yeah. If you don't get anything, you're always welcome here. Yeah. Um, who, who who was it from Halifax that gave you that that call? It was Steve. Steve, Steve Nicholl. Nicholl. Yeah. Oh, Steve yeah. Nicholl, shout out to you. <laughs> <laughs> Start, yeah. yeah, so um, he, he rang my dad. Uh, I, I don't I even know how he got the number. Maybe yeah, yeah. he got it through Huddersfield or something. But um, yeah, and then obviously it didn't work out at the other clubs. So, and then I came to, to Halifax and I think that there was like a few days, I think it was a, like on a Friday, I'd leave school early and um, I'd get picked up by Aki. You know, Jack Atkinson, yeah. yeah. Um and then we would we'd go and train on yeah. the Friday a few a few times before the season like before we actually yeah. uh, came together, you know, our age group. So yeah. I was training with the older ones. Um and then yeah, from Halifax onwards. The, the rest is history, yeah? yeah. Right. So let's talk about obviously at Halifax getting called up to the first team. How did that make you feel? Because you know, it, it for me, it all happened very quickly. Yeah. And oh, I was nervous. Were you nervous? I was nervous. Wow. Because we had like the the, the gaffer there at the time and, you know, they they, they are really good gaffers and the, the goalkeeper coach was really good to me as well. But, you know, there was, you know, when you're a young age and they've got the big personalities that they had, yeah. it was quite nerve wracking. Um, and then obviously, what was I, 16, going into the first team environment, it, yeah. it is nerve wracking no matter where you are. If you're at a Premier League club or non-league, it doesn't yeah. matter still the same sort of environment. Um, so yeah, I was nervous. I remember my first session was in Huddersfield. We were training on the Astro and it felt as though like a little flashback because it was where I used to train with Huddersfield. Yeah, the yeah. same. All oh, right. Um, bit. So I was like, oh, I know this place. Oh, it was wow. all like, yeah. Um, so then I trained there with um, with the team and everything. And then it was like, obviously yeah. they like what they saw. So there was like, oh, we want you to train more often. I think it was in Leeds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we would train during the week with the yeah. team and then, you know, go with them on maybe like a Thursday or something. Wow. But, well, um, yeah, it was, it was nerve wracking. That's crazy. You know, I, one thing I forgot to mention to you guys was that I told Carl to write three words that he best used to describe his career so far. And he wrote those three words. And can I have those, the paper, Carl? So Carl's wrote the three words and what we'll do is come onto it right at the end of the podcast, yeah? So I'll pass this to you and we'll come onto it. (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll come onto it uh, right at the end of the podcast and and we'll we'll get to know Carl a little bit more. You know, you guys are going to get to know, you know, an England player, which uh, I'm sure you want to do. Um, So obviously Halifax, yeah? When did the, you know, the, the, the move come to... Brighton, what happened? Um, I remember it. Um, so, do you remember Frank Arnold's? <laughs> so, we were, I swear, I think that you might have been there as well because I feel as though the whole team, we finished training. Yeah. It was like, oh, we're going to go with Arnold's. So, and then we was walking down and I get a DM from my agent, from my agent now. Yeah. But um, he, he DM me, he was just like, oh, are you free for a call? So, I was like, oh, like, I'm new to this. It's the first time I've ever had an agent yeah. uh, message me or anything. So I was like, okay, I'll take the call. Um, and then, so I had to step outside Van Garno's and took the call. Do you know what? I actually remember the, you going outside, I was, outside. I was walking, I was like, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, it was all new to me. So, and then he wanted to meet me the next day and said that obviously there was interest. He didn't say any of the clubs. Because um, obviously at that time, it was in the Youth Cup still. Um, yeah. I can't remember who, who we played. Sunderland. Yeah, before, who did we play before Sunderland? Oh, that club from Liverpool. Life. Oh, yeah. I didn't so play I, in that game. Yeah, so it was just yeah. like, I think it was, I might have been Garforth. Did we play Garforth? Uh, that was the first game. Yeah, the first game. Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah. around that time. Oh, okay, yeah. We beat them and we yeah, were still, yeah. still in the um, yeah. FA Youth Cup. So it was like, I want you to focus on that. Don't need all this other speculation and anything taking you, dis- uh, distracting you. So um, he said, there's interest. So and then I actually signed with him that day. Um, like when I met when I met him, and yeah. obviously I was new to it all, and he was like telling me all the things that could happen if I was with him, like all agents would do. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a good connection with him from the start, and I'm still with him now. Oh, um, right. and obviously with him meeting my family the first time, you know, he's now he's got a connection with my dad, with my mom, my granddad, and everything. So, um, uh, yes, yeah, so I since then, uh, I think it was, um. A few days before the Sunderland game, he was like, right, he was motivating me kind of thing um, and said, forget about everything. 
I hadn't told you the clubs for a reason. I don't want to get into your head. Um, and then we played Sunderland. I thought I had an okay game. I thought we played well, to be fair. We lost. Mate, this goal mate, penalty, mate. So. I was chasing shadows. That's what I was just saying. I was chasing shadows for 90 minutes, bro. Bali Mumba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, we, we played well, though. I felt as though yeah. that, you know, they, they scored a penalty. That was it, 1-0. Um, I remember coming off the game and I was like, you know, giving it the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, now we're at the cup. We played well. Now we could focus on the league and stuff like that, even though I knew that I was going. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and then, yeah, it was after the day after that, um, we got knocked out. I spoke to him about it. He said that um, Man United, Arsenal and Brighton are three clubs that, like, he said that there was others, but he wanted, he didn't want me to go visit five or six clubs because then it would scramble my head. Um, as in like I didn't know where I'd want to go yeah. so and then the first club I went to was Brighton spent a week down there I remember how was that how was that spending a week you know away from home it was mental honestly because I was in a horse family um, I was never really been in that environment before I've always been at home even when I was at Huddersfield I was yeah. always living at home M- could have, couldn't have moved further away like five five hours away right down wow. um, yeah. the south coast but um, I was in a horse family house living there Um Obviously, speaking to my mum and dad every day. Um, couldn't speak to anybody at Halifax about it, really. I remember yeah. Spenny was messaging me, asking where I was. I was a lot of people. To, there was a lot of speculation in the changes. <laughs> I'll say that now. There was a lot of speculation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, I just couldn't... I wasn't sure where I was actually going to go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was a it was a crazy experience for me to first go down there. And it was, it's like a whole different world. Um, you know, when we was at Colville College and then now I'm... <laughs> stepping into these buildings and it's mental like yeah. um and I loved it at Brighton I loved like I spent like I said I spent the week there who who was the manager there at the time uh it was um Chris Hewton Chris Hewton Chris Hewton at the time I actually spoke to him yeah. um the day I signed um like obviously he introduced himself and he's, he was obviously he wasn't there for that long after I signed so I didn't really get to uh, know him too well but yeah. just the fact that I signed and I shook his hand. He said, well, he's happy to have me on board and yeah. everything. Obviously, at the time, I was with the 18s and 23s, so I wasn't really training with him. But yeah. the fact that he still had time for me. Um, and then, obviously, Graham Potter is with top with me. And now the new gaffer, obviously, I've been on loan, so I haven't um, really seen him too much. But, uh, yeah, so sorry to uh, go forward on that. No, but, um, no. Yeah, so then we went to Brighton. I loved every minute of it. Um, I just, it's kind of like I knew instantly. I felt like I was comfortable there. I, I loved the coaches, the, the facilities, how they wanted to play, everything about it, really. The only problem was it was five five hours away. Um, and then after that, I think in the space of two weeks, I went to all three clubs. So uh, where, where did you go after Brighton? I went to Man United. So <laughs> it was like I went from, it was like Monday to... So on a Sunday, I travelled down to Brighton. Then Monday to Friday, I spent in Brighton. Saturday, like, I rested and came back up. Yeah. Um, and then Sunday, I travelled to Man United. Was there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Training with the first team there. How was that? Oh, God. But it was international break, so a lot of them were, were away. Yeah. But like there were still some big characters there. Any um, names? Um. So there was... Young, Ashley Young, yeah. Ashley Young, uh, at the time, um, I can't really remember too many off the top of my head, but um, I trained with them once, uh, and then with the youth team, uh, another time, and then on the Wednesday, we had a game. Um, I don't think I did great, but I think I was just steady kind of thing. Yeah. And then, um, after that game, I traveled to back down to I, I think I had a day off, spent it with the family because I was. In Manchester, I was back home um, and then travelled down on the Thursday to Arsenal. Spent a the night there with a horse family. Yeah. Um, and I was only in Arsenal for one day because obviously the international break as well. Yeah, and yeah. It was off. So um, trained with the first team there. What was that like? Trained with Petr Cech. <laughs> it was Crazy. Yeah, wow. I don't know. Even I was there for a day. Yeah. And yeah. Obviously, because I was young, he was guiding me. Like he was tell like there was we've been training and he no he's known me for ten minutes and he's there saying oh I think you should do this I think you should do that and I'm like I'm just I'm like a sponge I'm soaking up everything that he's doing I'm watching I'm Martinez 
I've oh, yeah. with both of them. Oh, wow. Um, Martinez is yeah. Aston Villa now. Yeah, World Cup winner. winner. Yeah, mental. <laughs> like, you can't even wear the cup of it. Was like... Yeah, so it was obviously I was starstruck, like, yeah. seeing it. And obviously now Martinez has gone on to win the World Cup and, you know, he's, he's having the world. So, yeah. um, and then obviously the name of Petr Cech and, you know, he's just probably one of the best Premier League goalkeepers that have been. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was, like I said, I was like a sponge soaking it all up. Uh, I was only there for a day, but um, I had a meeting afterwards and they said that they wanted to offer me a contract. Same with uh, my United as well, but um, obviously I had a few days to think about it and then I was like, where, do, where did I prefer and where did I actually oh, feel yeah. comfortable kind yeah. of thing? And obviously I had the chat with my, my dad, but obviously he could only give his advice to a certain point because he doesn't know football as much as maybe I would have done. Yeah. Um, obviously speaking to my agent as well and he was happy that wherever I wanted to go, even if I wanted to stay at Halifax, yeah, yeah. he would have kept me there. Yeah. But um, like, you know, you have those uh, rumours of some agents that will you know, push you off to Man United and Arsenal because they'll get a paycheck kind of thing. But he was like, wherever you want to go, you go there. So yeah. I, when I said Brighton, he was like, let's go. Wow. Like it was, so, Unreal. And I think that obviously I, he's only got a small company, but he's like that with the players. He's um, yeah, yeah. he's always in contact with me and he's better that way. So he will, um, he's always a phone call, he's always a text away after every game you'll speak yeah, to yeah. me. Um, and I'd rather that than, you know, you never speak to your agent and then Maybe if you need a new contract, that's when you speak to him. Or yeah. if there's interest, then that's when you speak to him. I've heard, I've heard a lot of nightmares about certainly. Like I, I listened to and I watched the Ben Foster, the Fozcast. Yeah. I, I watched what a, what a podcast, what a by, podcast by the way. Isn't it? <laughs> and he obviously talks about, um, you know, you know, I think he brought one of his one, an agent on actually. Yeah, actually yeah. yeah, and he was speaking to him. Have you have you been in contact with them or yeah, met them I've, before? Uh, I've I've spoke to Rich. Yeah. Um, I haven't met him or anything, but yeah, yeah. like we know of each other kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's how it, how it is with football now. Um, once you get your name out there a little bit, yeah, yeah. everybody seems to to know you're only a phone call away from, like I'm, I could be a phone call away from, I don't know, a Premier League player, I don't, I, for example. But yeah, because um, uh, yeah, it's, it's just all the connections that you have in football, like especially with my age and being a, a player as well, here you have so many connections and yeah, yeah. he doesn't seem to stop working yeah. kind of thing he's constantly at it um, does that rub off on you a little bit a little bit i yeah. think that because i've seen how dedicated he was to his craft and how dedicated he is now to you know trying to find me well trying to build my career with me kind of thing i'm like I, right there's no excuses now kind of thing yeah um so yeah it's it's the win-win for me yeah let's talk about moving moving away from home you know, I know, I know sometimes that can be a, a, a tough one. I know um, for obviously other people, like most people our age or at that time would be moving away for like university, yeah. but you're moving away to actually start to begin your career. How is that, you know, as a, for you personally and for your family as well? Yeah. My mum wasn't too happy about me picking Brighton because it's the furthest one away. She would have rather me picked Man you because it's on the doorstep. But and then she was like, I know why you're doing it. I want you to be happy. I want you to do it. Yeah. But why? Is it five hours away? Um, but after, you know, I think I moved down in, I think my contract started on the 4th of December. So I was only down there for like a few weeks. And then with the 18s, they have two weeks off for Christmas anyway. So I was only down there for two weeks, came back up, had Christmas. Yeah. And then was back down. Um, so, and then after the Christmas break and, you know, she, she kind of got used to me not being there. She was like, I'm happy for you. I want you to go on and keep doing well. So yeah. um, it was tough um, first moving down. But like I said, because it was so close to Christmas, I knew that at that time it was only going to be two weeks before I'm back up and seeing them. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it was when we went into the new year, it was more tough because yeah. I didn't know when I was going to come home, come home. And obviously at that time I couldn't drive. I'd be reliant on the trains and everything. Um, so it got a bit daunting, but and then Brighton have always got somebody there to speak to. Wow, yeah. um, I think that the coach that signed me at Brighton, like I'm still in contact with him now, he's still yeah. at Brighton and he played a big part in my career, you know, building me up. And he was kind of like a second dad to me, like oh. a, a southern dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Because um, 
just because um, obviously my family is so far away. He took me under his wing and, you know, he would go out and get a coffee or get food and stuff yeah. like that. So he was needed for me, um, I think. And he can manage. He's like a really good man manager. So yeah, yeah. he knows when to put an arm around you or when to you know, give you give some, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is 100% needed. But yeah, after I said once we got to the end of the season, I got used to being away from home and yeah. then obviously had the break as well. Came up came up home. But yeah, I I, um, I don't regret going to Brighton and you know, I don't think I'd be here right now if I didn't go to Brighton. Yeah. You know, being, you know, with the England squads and stuff like that. You know, it might have happened if I went to Man United and Arsenal, but mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be yeah. as successful as I am now. I can't see it. Yeah. Wow. Carl, that's that's been amazing. We're gonna take a quick break and uh, we'll be back. Yes, guys. So we are back again. You know, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I'm enjoying it. So you should too. You know, it's been very, very, um, a lot of information, a lot of great information. Very, very interesting. So, Carl, how are you feeling? Yeah, Talk to good. me. How are you feeling? You're not I'm good. Yeah. It's my first time doing a podcast like this, to be fair. I've done like, as I said, over Zoom and, yeah, yeah. you know, a fair few interviews in my time. But, um, you know, first proper sit down with the cameras and everything. Don't know if I should be looking at the camera. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, no, I'm enjoying it. Honestly, you're doing amazing. So keep doing, keep doing you. You're doing amazing. So let's talk about you know changing. I just want to just not too long. I don't want to stay on this for too long. But I want to talk about the tempo of the game, going from you know playing at Halifax to moving to Brighton, and then what what was it like after that? Like you know, did you go on any loan moves and stuff like that? And what was the tempo like, and how did you adjust to it? Yeah, I think that the first week was tough in Brighton. Um, obviously, going from Halifax to Brighton, it's a big step up, and uh, all the play- all the players at Brighton, are top quality, and they've been in like the you know England or international youth setups yeah. and stuff like that. So they're you know they're good players. Like um, so that was tough, and it probably took maybe a week for me to see what it is with goalkeeping as well. Like I still get this now. I said that if I was to go back down to Brighton um, and train for a week, which I have done this season. Like that's still a massive step up from Lincoln, as good as Lincoln is, or like Warsaw, wherever I've been on loan. It's still a massive step step up to the Premier League, and it kind of like with a goalkeeper, you you have to like it takes your head back a little bit because you have to see the ball, and it takes longer for you to adjust to it. Yeah. yeah. Um. So that's always tough. I still get that now. Um. But it takes less time for me to adjust to it. It would take maybe like, you know. 10 shots or something or maybe a day I don't know um, but yeah that's all. it's always tough to see that when it was obviously harder the first time um, like I think the first couple of days I was like are you sure you want to keep me like have you got a receipt for me do you want to send me back or <laughs> because obviously goals are going in when you know, I just couldn't see the ball quick enough yeah, um, yeah. but then as I said like I adapted to it and you know with the help of the, goal, the coaches around the goalkeeper coaches and the yeah. other players as well that yeah. you know I settled in pretty well and yeah. you know I haven't looked back Where, where's the first place you went out on loan to? yeah I went on loan to Worthing um, it's pretty much it's in the 7th division well 6th division now they got promoted last season or the season before um, but I was there at the time when Covid were about um, I think our season got cut off short um, Covid but yeah so it was a it's like a part-time loan. So because it was literally the next town over from uh, where Brighton train, like I'd train all week for Brighton, use the facilities, be able to, you know, get Brighton standard of training. And then they would train on like Tuesday and Thursday nights. So I'd train maybe a Thursday night, just once a week with them. Just so and then I can, you know, be involved in the group as well, not just turn up on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah. I think that was good and helped me settle in a lot quicker as well. Um and with me, like you probably know this, I'm not really a, a big personality. Um, it takes me time to settle into a group and then I can you know, start showing myself. So I think that I kind of let my football do the talking and then it's easier to get respected after that. You know, like I said, that when I moved down to Brighton and as I said, I was still adjusting to it. But once I showed them what I was about and, you know, I was staying like, they, it was like, oh, it's decent life. Um, so and then they respected me straight away from that. Um, but yeah, with with Worthing, I was there, played thirty about thirty games or something, and then wow. the, the league got cut short. I was, yeah. I was fuming though because we was top of the league. Oh. Like, 
I think like two games in hand, five, six points clear. And yeah. It was like we was going to get promoted, but another league got cut short. Yeah. Um, so I was good about that. But yeah, I've always had um, good memories at Worthing. The lads yeah. were top with me and obviously we was really, uh, we was a top team. Like we, we was too good for that division. Um, and that's how they now got out of the division. But yeah, yeah I've got, got good memories from there. Wow, that sounds great. So after Worthing, where did you go to then on loan? Yeah, so um, I, when we obviously got back into football and everything, I, I was playing in the 23s at Brighton. Yeah. <clears throat> so they wanted to send me out straight away. So I think when I first went down to Brighton, I played, because I went in December, I played like four or five games in the 18s, you know, just to get some game time and then went out on loan to Worthing. And then the when we got back into football, um, Played with the 23s, you know, they wanted, because there's, there's positives for going out on loan, there's positives for staying in to the club, in your parent club. Yeah. So the positives of loan is you get the first team experience, um, you get game time, um, yeah. and then you can develop as, like, you can grow into the kind of football you're going to be. And then when you're staying in the club, you get, you know, the experience of, you know, training with the first team every now and again. Um, the quality of sessions that you have is going to be a lot better because they've got the facilities to do so, they've got the staff to do so. Um, and then obviously you can improve on your technical attributions a lot more. Um, so then for that season, I stayed in uh, with Brighton so I can, you know, grow more into my body as well, you know, use the facilities, get in the gym a little bit more. I know it doesn't look like I've been in the gym, but no. I have a little bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was I enjoyed being in the building. Um I was comfortable in the building. Um, which I think towards the end of that season I was like, I'm too comfortable. Okay. So it was like I need to be put outside my comfort, comfort zone, zone yeah. and see if I sink or swim. That's an amazing mindset to have, by the way. Yeah, I think that that kind of got implemented in me by the coaches, yeah, and that yeah. coach in particular at Brighton. Um, because he's like mentally it's like another level to that what I've ever seen. Um so yeah, he, he's kind of implemented that into me, and then that's when I went out on loan to in the following season to uh, Warsaw. Warsaw, and how obviously so now you've gone to Warsaw. To Warsaw's Birmingham, like yeah. Midlands, West Midlands yeah. sides. How was that? Because did you have to move up there? Did you? So what what happens in that whole process? Yeah, so that was my first proper loan. Um, so it was like a full time thing, and obviously with it being what, two and a half, three hours away from Brighton, I, I moved up. I stayed in Diggs. I was saying things with two other lads, um, which I think helped me massively. Like I'm still chatting to them lads today and a few others from Warsaw as well. I went on holiday with them last season, uh, at the end of last season. Um, but yeah, so um, it helped me massively because like I said, I'm, when I get first put into a, a training, a changing room, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> could get the word out there, but uh, I kind of struggled to show myself and, you know, become that personality that I am. Um, so, and then I, obviously I said that I'd use uh, my skills when I'm playing football to to show that. But and then when I was living with the lads, it got me out of the shell a lot quicker. You know, they were helping me settle in in the training uh, in the training ground as well and on the pitch. So that was massive for me. And, you know, I loved it. Uh, I loved my time at Warsaw, even though we, we went through some tough, tough spells, like, um, because it was my first loan, I was a bit naive to to football and everything. Um, we ended up the the gaffer that brought me in. He ended up moving on in like January, February time oh, okay. um, yeah. because we we wasn't getting the results. I think we lost seven games in the in the row. Yeah. Um, how how did that make you feel? I think that it got to a point where it was like I'd be starting a game and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna lose this kind of thing. Like obviously it's not the mentality to have, but it was. He was like, because it kept happening and we couldn't, he was like, once you're in that momentum of losing, you can't get out of it. Like we'd go to the bottom of the league and lost one nil. But like, obviously we, we ended up staying up. I think we came like 16 or something. Um, but it was a tough time for me, for my first loan to experience, you know, fans, your home fans as well, giving you some stick, obviously, because they're not happy and you're not getting the results. And, you know, they've got the, the right to say that because we were performing um, and then obviously the away fans giving you a stick and and then um, you know you, you're kind of worried about we could get relegated here yeah. as well and you know my first loan first proper loan 
lost the gaffer, we're on a bad run of games, could get relegated, uh, home fans giving you some stick. Um, but then thankfully we, we started to find a little bit of form, got yeah. a new gaffer in, he was top with me. Um, and then obviously stayed up um, and obviously I was involved in the England set up as well with um within that was that was that the first time no no the first time was when i was at um Werben. yeah um so that was like a real shock to the system like um i remember getting the the whatsapp message saying you are potentially because the, what they do is if um if you're going to be involved in the camp you they have to let you know a few weeks before just to prepare you kind of thing yeah saying that you could potentially be called up and then i think i got the whatsapp message so the first time I was like, oh, they'll um, they'll email me or something. Or I'll get a formal. call. So for, <laughs> formal. So I thought it was yeah. going to be formal. Like, yeah. And then I think it was the morning where you found out. And then I got a WhatsApp. <laughs> it was like a massive me- message. And I was like, I was trying, I, like, I just woke up. I yeah, just yeah. saw it. And I was like, like, I just dropped my phone. And I was like, no way. It wow. was happening like. Because obviously I was playing for Worthing in the seventh division, yeah, yeah, and then getting involved in lads that are playing at like at Premier League clubs. They might not be playing all the time, but there was you know in the ground, around it, yeah. or at least on loan at some Championship, wow. League One, League Two clubs. And I was how did that make you feel? I felt like an imposter. Like I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I felt as though like, what am I doing here? Kind of thing. Like when you see these big names and everything, I'm like. Do I belong here? Um, and then obviously as time goes on and I show what I'm about, then you know you have more confidence in it. And the more camps that I've been in, the easier it's got. Um yeah. but like the first one or two, I was like, Yeah, this this doesn't feel right. Wow. Um but obviously it's 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 a good thing to feel like that. I'd rather feel like an imposter than no, it's too comfortable. Too and, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Be too comfortable. Because sometimes it makes you work that extra bit harder. Exactly. So. I think that, and with me, I still get nervous for every game. Um, I don't think that will ever change because, no, if you're nervous, it means that you care, and I care about how I play. When if my family are watching, I want to make sure that they can be proud of what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I care about people's opinion on me, and I shouldn't, but I do. Um, because I know that. Some people might be seeing me for the first time kind of thing. And I want to make sure that, you know, they'll be walking back to the car and mm. thinking, oh, go goalkeeper him. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I feel so that I've, I've never not been nervous for a game. And yeah. I, I, I kind of like it. Yeah. So, obviously, with also that happened. You stayed up. Happy days. Where did you go from there? Yeah, so um went back down to Brighton at the end of that season. Um, trained for about a week. Then we had the off-season break. Uh, I I finished a little bit early because and then we had an England camp in the off-season. Uh, we had Euro qualifiers. Um, wow. And then, so, and then obviously I didn't get, so Brighton look at, looked after me to be fair. So I went down, trained for a few days. Yeah. Had my break. Um, and then I had it a little bit early because I was getting, getting called up to the England camp. Yeah. Um, spent, I think it was like three, four weeks there on the camp and then had another week or two afterwards and then went back in for pre-season. And then, you know, because I had a good season, um, even though the results didn't determine uh, it was a good season, but I did personally. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, I walked away with players, player and young player a season. Wow. And I did have a little start that um, when I was at Worthing, I got players, player. When I was at Brighton, 23s, I got... Young player of the season. Wow. Walsall, young player of the season. <laughs> yeah. Young players player of the season. So hopefully something can happen this season. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Touch wood. Touch wood yeah. Um, yeah. So and then because I had a good season, I had interest um, from many League One clubs. You know, it's obviously the step up that I needed. Yeah. I feel yeah, so yeah. that I didn't want to, I didn't have the, like the, the opportunities there, but say that if the opportunity came for me to go to a championship club, I feel as though I kind of like the, you know, the little steps up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of going, it could be a massive step up. Yeah, yeah. But it also could Bring drop you down yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. play, if you don't do well. So I wanted to make sure that I was doing the little gradual steps. Um, and then obviously, like I said, I had the interest of some some clubs, some wow. big clubs. I had obviously Derby at the time. Wow. Uh, Portsmouth, 
Lincoln. Lincoln were the first club to come from there. You know, at Derby, who was the manager there? Was it when Frank Lampard or was it Wayne Rooney? No, no, this is this was start of the season. So, start of the uh, season. It was uh, a manager, it's called Liam Rosini. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was yeah, no, at yeah. Brighton. So yeah. um, obviously he knew me from Brighton. Yeah, I yeah. trained with him a few times. Um, he's at Hull now. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, I had that interest. Lincoln were top with me from the start. Like they, they always uh, expressed their interest. Literally, whilst I think it was before the England camp, uh, but and then they said, "Listen, get England out of the way. We hope you play. Um, and I just smash it. Focus on that, and then we'll speak to you after. We'll give you a little bit of a break. Just forget about football. You know, once you finish England, we'll forget about football for a week." Uh, just relax and then we'll speak to you again. So they're really respectful about it. Speak to my agent all the time, making sure I was okay if I needed anything. Um, like it was just a really good club. And, you know, the, the it's called Jez, uh, the guy who sorted out me going to Lincoln. He, he yeah. was top with me. Like I think I went down when I decided that I was going to go to Lincoln. Um, the first day I went down and um, I was in a hotel because they were sorting out where I was going to be living. But he took me around. The place showed me what Lincoln is about. Not too much about Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my, my uh, older sister actually went to university in Lincoln, so yeah, yeah. I've been there. It's a nice, nice city. It's nice. It's, nice, it's, nice, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a small city, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's just because of the cathedral that it's um, a city, but <laughs> yeah. it's nice up up by the cathedral. But yeah, he took me around, showed me around Lincoln. Uh, went for a coffee, went for food that night. He's always messaging me, making sure that I'm okay if I needed anything. Yeah, because uh, obviously it's another. I had to. Uh, move yeah, away yeah. again so he wanted to make sure that I was comfortable and happy and everything so yeah. he made it easier for me to settle in obviously because I knew Jay was here as well yeah 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 it was um, Jay Ben by the way yeah Jay Ben um, yeah he, Jay you're, you're going to come on the pod soon like, yeah. he has to he yeah he has to, he has to yeah. but um, <laughs> yeah so he, I was speaking to him before anyway yeah. and because um, obviously I, he joined the same, same time I did well a few weeks before me yeah yeah so I congratulated him and he said you next because um, obviously he knew that there was interest of me going. Yeah. Um, so and then I ended up moving in with Jay. Yeah. Uh, spending the first part of, well, how long has it been now? Maybe like six, seven months yeah. with him or something. Yeah. And then nowadays he's gone out on loan. But, yeah. Um, yeah, it just made that made it even easier for me. Wow. Like I've, I've been really lucky with moving in with another lad when I've been out on loan. Yeah. Because yeah. it just makes you settling a lot easier. And then it's obviously with a lad that I've known for however many years with yeah. Jay. So yeah, I've, I've um, enjoyed this season so far. We're, yeah. doing, we're doing well to be fair, we're 12th in the league, but um, you know, just trying to get the clean sheets up. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, um, unfortunately we lost yesterday, but yeah, we're going to try and finish the season strong, hopefully. Yeah. What What are the Lincoln City fans like? Yeah, they're good to be fair. Um, like there's been many times that, uh, say after the game, because my dad will come to watch all the games. Um, all the home games at least. Um, uh, and there'll be a couple of times that after the game, we'll go out for a coffee and uh, like straight after the game and like you'll see the Lincoln fans walking through and, you know, they always try and, they'll stop me and say, oh, well played today, etc. Oh, nice. um, so yeah, they've been top with me. Um, I think that ever since the start, I think, you know, they kind of like took me in as one of their own kind of things. It's yeah, yeah. tough with a, a lone player and I understand that Fans, they kind of want their own players to be doing well. Um, but like they said, there's a cliche, don't fall in love with a lone player because he's only here for a season kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So they took me in as one of their own and they've been taught with me. And, you know, I think that I kind of, you know, helped my way with that as well with, um, you know, showing what I was about. Yeah. You know, being nice, uh, just being my, myself kind of thing. And, um, yeah, showing what I was about on the pitch as well. So, yeah. I am, um, yeah, they've been taught with me. Yeah. So let's talk about England. Um, obviously, you're, you're, you've been to a, quite a few camps now. The question that everyone's probably wondering is, who's the best player you've played with at England? Who do you think is like the one that stands out to you? There's, there's so many big names. Like, yeah. obviously, um, I've been in quite a few camps. Um, so... I haven't played with them, but obviously I trained with them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trained with Bakaya Saka, um, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Um, who else up there? 
yeah, quite there's, 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 yeah, there's so, so many, many to, yeah, to yeah, yeah. like it's tough to think about but yeah like even then it's you know when we were saying about adjusting and um like seeing the ball quickly and stuff yeah, yeah. like that was tough tough as well for me because obviously training at you know whether if it was Warsaw Lincoln at um Worthing and then going to England yeah where you just see these players and the, the quality that they've got like destined Premier League players the uh, majority of them are so um, like you just see it and like it's like you're just watching tennis kind of thing yeah, like, yeah, you're just yeah. constantly you're constantly on the swivel but um, yeah you adjust to it and you know they're good lads they're a good set of lads and a lot of them have been together from you yeah. know the younger age groups yeah, like yeah, 16s yeah. or something so I felt that it was tough for the first couple of counts for me to try to implement myself in but I think with me you know doing what I was doing with my loans and you know playing every week and stuff like that yeah and that put me into the squads every single time well majority of the time it kind of helped implement me and it's not like I, I was in for one camp out for three camps in for another camp like I was you know in with them along the journey as well um and then we've got the Euros coming up in the off season now um yeah. hopefully I can get called up um be good just to experience you know a, a a competition with England, yeah. Um, so that would be good, but yeah, to answer your question, I think that the, the main would be a Wow, that's amazing! That's amazing. So, Arsenal fans out there, Josh, I know you're watching this, <laughs> I know you're gonna be buzzing because he loves Bakaya Saka, yeah. Um, but so I know you obviously wrote the three words at the start that would um that you'd use to best describe how your career has gone. I'm gonna get the sheet now and then we're gonna read, I'll read out the first word. So, the first word you chose is roller coaster. Yeah. Why? I feel as though that football, it's never a plain sailing and, you know, upwards trajectory. It's always up, down, spirals. Um, I experienced that, obviously, with when we speak about, like, my starting up my career and everything. Um, there's always going to be those stages, week in, week out. Um, there's always going to be mistakes. Ex like all sorts can happen on and off the pitch, etc. Um, so I feel as though that that's just the life as, as a footballer. I feel as though it's always going to be a roller coaster. It's never going to be as easy as you know maybe fans might see it as. Um, like footballer, yeah. The cliche is they get paid loads of money and to kick a ball around. Like I understand that, but the fact of all this stuff that goes on behind the scenes that they wouldn't understand. Um, not that they wouldn't understand because the car is the fact that they just don't they don't know it. Like yeah. um so I think if they understood like realise what actually goes on, they'd understand it's a lot harder to become a footballer than you actually think. And yeah. to be a footballer and stay at that level when you have all this abuse that you get and all these other distractions that yeah. you know can take you off your game. I feel as though that it's it's um it's a very tough profession that everybody should know is yeah. is um you know it is the best but probably one of the harshest as well. Yeah. The second word you put is determined. Yeah. I feel as though that I always for every season that I have, I'll set targets, I'll speak to Brighton about it. Um like I'll speak to the psychologists at Brighton and we'll set personal targets. Um obviously when I'm alone it's tough for me to set like team targets. Yeah. Like obviously, the team will have some when I first join them, but yeah. the main ones for me and Brighton is my personal ones because it's my personal progression. So I'm always determined to try and do uh, make those targets and um, or even go past it. Like one of my targets for this season was to um, one stay fit. Um, so whether that means that I have to do the stuff off the pitch, take care of myself, recover right, go in the gym, do all my. Um, stretching etc to make sure that I'm ready to train make sure that I don't get injured touch wood um, and there, obviously there's going to be injuries down the way that you can't do anything about but trying to minimise that as best you can um, another one was to be involved in England which I, ha I have been this season um, obviously there's another camp coming up at the end of March and then there's the Euros like we talked about, like we talked about. Um, another one is 
to play as many games as I can and I'm on 30 something games yeah. um, now and then the final one was clean sheets beat the amount of clean sheets that I had last season I think I got 11 last season and I'm on 13 or 14 now Wow. and then we still got 10 games wow. left to go yeah. so and then obviously now I don't want to just settle at that I want to set a new, a new target this season for next season yeah, yeah yeah see if I can beat it next season um but yeah, um, I'm always going to be dedicated to my craft. To my craft, yeah. I think, like we spoke about at the start, with um, my agent being so dedicated, and it's rubbed off on me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I feel as though that, like I said, then I've got no excuses to not be dedicated. Oh, that's amazing! And the final word you put is proud. Yeah, I feel as though that you don't really understand how much you've achieved until you take a step back, or like going through this, like uh, when we actually speak about the career and what what's happened, like you don't realise it when you're in it. Um, it just kind of like, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it just happens so quick. So and then once you take a step back, I feel as though the end of the season is always the best time to do that. Yeah. So then you can take a step back, breathe, and then see what you've done in the season, see what you could have done better, see what you've done really well, see what you want to do next season. Uh, see what you could have done different, etc. So, um, yeah, I feel as though that I'm always going to be proud of what I do and whether that is, like we spoke as well, making my family proud, you know, with my dad coming to watch every game, my mum coming whenever she can, um, and stuff like that. I just want to make them proud. And then for me personally, to look after number one, which is yourself, yeah. and then make yourself proud for doing the best you can. Yeah. Oh, Carl, that was a wonderful way to, to wrap up the podcast. Honestly, thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. It's but bro, I am so proud of you as well. Honestly, I've known you for such a long time. I'm so proud of, you know, where you've come from and, you know, your journey. And keep doing you, keep being yourself because you're amazing, bro. Yeah, too, keep that up. But yes, guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell down below to keep you updated for when we post our next video. Yeah? We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.